My name is Tyler Trevino. I'm one of the curators of Trans Day of Visibility Fest here in Houston, Texas. And this is what Transpunk looks like. For fuck's sake! Yeah, y'all can like be doing acts of vandalism on the venue. Oh my god! Yeah. Hey, whatever happened to respect the space? Ah. <laughs> right, I'm sorry. Yeah, for real, bro. You gotta chill out, bro. Yeah, you're right. My bad, bro. No, si amamos over here. How was y'all's experience playing? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, again. <laughs> How was y'all's experience playing Trans Day of Visibility Fest today? Fucking sick. So it, it was so crazy whenever we found out that Homewrecker was going on like right after us. It was like, there's no way we like they're, they're gonna like fucking blow us out the fucking water. Also, I was listening to the rest of the bands. I was like, fuck, they're really fucking hard. We're gonna <laughs> sing at them. Like, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Shit. It was a fucking badass festival. Shout out to Tyler. Yeah. Lots of peeps. <laughs> Good speakers. <laughs> message that y'all would like to give to trans people living in Texas that are watching? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry that you're here. Be yourself. Yeah, Be yourself. Really There's love out there for you. Yeah. We all we all love you. Everyone. Your spaces for all trans people. They're just you just have to find them, but they're there. You gotta find your peeps. Yeah. It's trans safe is Goni tomorrow. Make some noise if you're trans. Yeah. Alright, now make some noise if you think it sucks being trans in a state that really fucking hates trans people. Yeah, a lot of noise. It's really nice being in a show that's so explicitly trans with so many trans people, because outside of like that one painted electric box in Montrose, it feels like there's no evidence of trans people existing in Houston most of the time. Being visibly and openly trans in a state trying to force trans people back in the closet truly is a radical thing. And being in community with other trans people really is important to make it as a trans person in Texas. because trans people pose a threat to their patriarchal systems of gender and the nuclear family. The ultimate goal of conservatives is to be able to control people's bodies and enforce restrictive norms in order to perpetuate a system that empowers cis straight men and reduces women to the role of raising the next generation of workers and patriarchs. The existence of trans people, queer people, and people who don't fit neatly into these boxes threatens the foundations of this system. That's why they're scared of us. It isn't just because we're a culture war issue, or because of their religion, or because of any other bullshit excuse. It's because our existence threatens these fucked up systems of power they're clinging onto, and we should be proud of that fact. Yes. We should be proud of being visible, and of refusing to go back into the closet despite the pressure against us, and of every other trans person who makes the radical decision to choose to be themselves despite the pressure they face. Ultimately though, visibility alone in a state that's becoming increasingly genocidal towards trans people is just putting a target on our backs. A lot of trans activism starts and ends at visibility and respectability politics, but we need to go beyond that if we want to survive. 
we need to keep building community with one another and supporting each other. Because without community, we're fucked. We need to make it dangerous to oppress us, and we need to bash back when people bash at us. And we need to fight not just for trans liberation, but for liberation from every system of oppression and hierarchy. I have to check my hair. Oh. Okay. Well, briefly. A lot of the ideals of being punk are very applicable and important to being queer um, because I personally am very against assimilation. Um, I've been, I've, I read a lot of queer theory about assimilation versus liberation, and I feel like um, it's really important to consider that, like, as a queer person or really anybody, your rights should not be dictated by the state or any, like, anything like that. Um, so I think in order to really um, accept queer liberation and embrace the idea that you don't need to be told who or what you are by anyone else, it's important to be familiar with punk ideals. All in all, I just think I feel much closer with the trans community in Texas because we're all suffering through it together. And I think it's important that we realize that, yes, we are suffering, but we are stronger in a bigger group and we shouldn't isolate ourselves because that's what they want us to do by taking away our rights and all that other shit. Queer people don't have to like change ourselves to be likable by you or similar to you in order for you to respect us and love us and like us. Um, if you see someone who is outwardly queer, um, this happens a lot especially because I go to a school with a lot of queer people and it'll be like, oh, I like queer people, but not the ones that are like annoying about it. I like trans people, but not the ones that are like annoying about it. Like in my mind, queer people don't need to conform to all the things that straight people do. The most important, like some of the most important like issues for gay people is not stuff like gay marriage. I actually don't need my queerness to be validated by um, an institution that is upheld by religion and the state. Um, I don't feel the need to get legally married. Married. I know a lot of queer people here who feel the same. Um, and just because like queer people get a right that straight people have does not mean that we are immediately like liberated. Um, we are still getting killed. We're still getting hate crimed. Um, sh like shit is still horrible. We don't have half the rights that straight people do. Um, and so I think that things like that are not our biggest issue. And for straight people who think that things like gay marriage and stuff like that and like solve all the problems um actually not the fucking case and we need to keep pushing for all of our rights in full um and a lot of that is done by just challenging and taking down large institutions like capitalism in the state Cracked at word hunt, but you're not cracked at battleship. Great. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Guys. That's crazy. Huh? <laughs> I'll do some research, I guess. Yeah. Fucking battleship Aww. goes hard. I'll These fuck up kids, some battleship. They keep me young. <laughs> 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 What's a young kid for? What? <laughs> 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 What's your favorite iMessage game? I like Pong, but I also really like darts. Not a lot of people play darts, 
and you know like you know pong takes skill but like darts take skill and accuracy you really gotta like hone in on your technique there uh, and I just like I feel like there's more of a fi hey camera back on me <laughs> there's like more of a finesse there there's like a finesse with darts that you just don't get in any other iMessage game Thank you for sharing. Yeah, y'all are welcome. Feel that way about Cup Pong too. Cup Pong, what is that? What that one tank game? No. That game is so Bro, no one, no, one said no one, no one, no one fucks with a tank game. I'm no sorry. I do play iMessage eight ball okay. for cash. <laughs> what? <laughs> Me and Dante have started gambling on our iMessage 8 ball games. So, like, it started with like $2 and then $4, and then we just kind of kept doubling it. You're um, gambling. Yeah, we're gambling on iMessage 8 ball. We should go confront them. Yeah, I'm down. What should we, what should we say? You should say. What can you tell me about your gambling addiction? <laughs> yeah, say, what can you tell me about your iMessage gambling addiction? We have a question for Dante. What can you tell me about your iMessage gambling addiction? <laughs> I won double or nothing, so. Fuck you! <laughs> I became a part of the Texas scene before I even moved to Texas. Um, I was visiting Houston for the summer, um, going into my junior year of high school. Um, so I was here all summer and I started going to shows here and there and I fucking loved it. And while I was like visiting, I started like taking some photos at shows too, um, which I really loved, even though they kind of sucked. <laughs> I really loved it um, and it quickly, became like a huge passion of mine to just like be involved in the scene and going to shows and like experiencing the DIY community in that way. Then I moved away again for like two weeks and I was like shit, I miss Houston and I also really really miss, I mean a huge part of that was I really missed the scene and I was like fuck it, I'm moving there and then I moved here and that was like almost two years ago and it's, it's changed my life for real. Living in Texas while being trans and queer has taught me some major resilience that I wouldn't have really learned otherwise, to be honest, and kind of just like also has taught me to learn to love myself a lot more, if that makes sense. Because like, man, being trans and queer in Texas, it's hard, it, for sure. And like, there are a lot of things that like could bring me down and have brought me down. Um, but like, through like experiencing these things as and also like through finding a community here has taught me like damn like I'm strong as hell and I'm actually awesome and I don't know why all these bitches try to hate me um, for being myself like you know um, and also a huge thing that being trans and, and queer in Texas has taught me is how to like the skills to like find community because it can feel hard, like, and a lot of people think it's fucking impossible also. I just need PSA, it is not impossible at all. No matter where you are, if you're in the buttfuck nowhere, you think 
You can't find people. There's always people. Queer people are everywhere. We exist everywhere. We're not going anywhere. And it's not impossible to find community. So that's one thing that has definitely taught me. Um, we can start with what, what was your experience growing up trans in Texas, if you grew up in Texas? Um, I did grow up in Texas. I lived in Houston and then the rest of the time in Katy. Um, it was weird. It was very like, you shouldn't be like this, blah, 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 like girls are supposed to be interested in this type of thing. Um, I didn't really have a lot of friends and I got bullied a ton growing up. Um, I don't know if you can tell by how funny I am, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know, I felt really isolated because I felt like nobody could really relate to me growing up. Um, but that's that's changed now in adulthood. It was, it was really lonely there for quite a few years though. Um, what do you love most about being trans? Um, I love feeling comfortable. I started testosterone a uh, month and five days ago. Um, I'm doing a video project right now. Actually, I'm taking a photo of myself every single day this year. And it's, it's just like from a dead on angle, just like the most unflattering angle. But um, I shaved off my mohawk, which I felt like was a very vital part of me at midnight on New Year's, January 1st, 2024. Um, so it's to document my hair growth just because, but then also to document my changes on testosterone um, like during the first year that I'm on it and since being on it I just feel like it's rewired my brain a little bit like I'm thinking much more clearly I'm much more confident and I'm like experiencing hope for a good future for the first time in my life and I think that's pretty dope um, you know like I just I love how really leaning into that and embracing that and celebrating that um, has just changed me night and day like I'm, I'm, I'm so much happier As I've been making this documentary, I've been trying to figure out if I think that being trans in Texas feels um, isolating or if it feels like the complete opposite of that. Um, because part of me is like, Texas politics are not made in our benefit. Texas culture is very not friendly. Um, to queer people, historically. Um, but another part of me feels like I wouldn't be as happy living anywhere else because the queer community in Houston is just crazy incredible. Um, especially like after publicly coming out as transgender, like to everyone in the music scene, th there's just been like so much support and so much love coming from these people and I think that it's because the Texas politics um, are so against us that we find uh, solidarity and love within our own communities and we're kind of like in this together I guess. Um, I got into the scene when I was like 13 or 14 years old. Growing up middle school I was just super into punk music because my uncle gave me a binder of like two to four hundred some something in between that CDs of all of his old punk albums from the 80s 90s 2000s um, and I would listen to those all the time and that kind of shaped my entire personality going forward um, but Really specifically, I was into this album called Grow Up by the band called uh, The Queers. And I saw when I was like 14 that they were coming to Houston for, I think it was their 40th anniversary tour. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm game, like I'm going. It was at like the secret group. Um, and I went and opening for them was a local band called Gen Y. Um, 
who's badass, by the way. Gen Y is awesome. Um, and I saw, you know, these dudes in leather jackets and mohawks, and I saw all of these people just throwing down for them. And I was like, I live in Texas. I didn't know that there's, like, people like this here. And, I, like, immediately I kind of knew that I'd found a community that was welcoming to me, um, that I felt accepted in, and it was a really cool thing to experience. So, like, going forward, after that Gen Y show, I started looking for flyers on the street, I searched up all of these bands on social media and I followed them, I had my post notifications on, I was always looking for new shows, um, and it just kind of became my whole life after that. I met so many people that I just cannot imagine my life without from the music scene. Um, especially like being a little kid and going to House of J was just um, such a crazy and beautiful experience that I would not trade for the world. Um, especially being a queer kid, that was the first time, being at House of J was the first time that I'd ever seen queer adults, I guess, like in real life, um, and not just on TV. Um, and it was, it was kind of crazy to experience, um, when you kind of been sheltered from that your whole life. Starting Tim Tats Magazine was actually completely an accident. I never intended to have a magazine, um, or a business of any kind. Um, just starting it was just a huge snowball of things. <laughs> um, it basically all started in uh, 2021 or 2022 over the summer. I'd been going to shows for a while, um, but I had just started taking a photography class at school and I was kind of starting to fall in love with photography. I thought that it was so cool. I thought that it was fun. Um, I loved bringing my little point-and-shoot camera everywhere. I loved having disposable cameras on me at all times. Um, and it was just like a big hobby for me. I started bringing my camera to shows just to take pictures of the bands for fun and practice. I never really intended to do anything with it. I never wanted to like be hired. I just kind of wanted to do it. I decided after a certain period of time, I'm going to make a, a photo zine or like a photo book portfolio thing so people can hold my photos in their hands and look at them like right there and I thought that that was such a great idea so I was hyped on that I started putting together my photos in this little zine format but as I was making it I just got like way too excited and it got carried away a little bit I guess um, because I started including these like fun graphic design elements. I started including like little graffiti drawings in there. Um, I started just doing way too much. And by the end, like I had 52 pages. There was little drawings, designs. I had like short interview segments with local bands. And I was like, oh shit, I kind of made a magazine. But I didn't really like comprehend that while I was doing it. I just kind of realized afterwards. Um, but I'm really glad that that happened because, you know, seven issues later, it's been like my whole life for the past like three years. Um, and I couldn't imagine what I'd be doing without it. It's kind of like, it's like the only thing that matters to me. It's like the only thing that I think about some days. Um, and I've never been this passionate about something and had so much love for something um, and had people respond to it.
I love about being transgender is that I can kind of like form my own meaning of it, um, yet still feel like there's like a sense of like belonging and like understanding with other trans people, where it's like I don't share like the same experience as everyone else, um, but I kind of like that. Like it's very unique. But I guess like even as a kid, I knew that I was different. Um, I have like a very distinct like memory of crying in a Ross dressing room because my mom wanted me to pick out a dress and I was not having it like at all and I had like a full on like breakdown. Um, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it really wasn't fun because I knew that I was different but I didn't know why and that type of thing wasn't ever like explored or it wasn't allowed to be explored at all within like my family. Like even as I did start to like um, like come out and shit, my family kept telling me, oh, you can't be, you can't be this and that because you don't act a certain way or your cousin does blah, blah, blah. And you know, she's a girl. How come you're not? That type of thing. Um, so it was kind of hard. It took a long time for me to like actually, um, I guess like exist, right? Uh, <laughs> and we are like all different people just like non-queer people are like you know everybody's very different and very unique what advice would you give to younger trans people living in texas mostly just like keep on going like it'll get better at some point you know like younger people are starting to take over more and we're gonna do the best we can to like get rid of the freaking trans folks i think a big part of my identity is living here um, because I'm Mexican, um, and because I'm mestizo, so I'm half native, so I feel kind of an obligation to be here. I've realized it's become more dangerous for us to stay here. I feel very tied to this place. I feel like everybody who has, you know, lived to become me has had to fight to be here, um, in some way or another. So, I guess in that sense, it's kind of changed my outlook on you know, what the course of my life is allowed to be. And I still kind of feel a resistance in a way, like I'm gonna stay here anyways because fuck you, this is my home. You don't get to take that away from me just because you came in and like, imposed your fucking white people laws. I think a huge thing that we need to do is have solidarity with each other, um, but especially like listening when it comes to intersectionality. I feel like not a lot of people are willing to listen to queer people of color and genuinely listen to them, like especially when it comes to how uh, white queers want to speak and how unwilling they are to accept that they have a lot of internalized racism that they need to overcome um, and recognize and take steps back from. Um, another thing is the gender binary is enforced by white supremacy. and. That's a thing that needs to be acknowledged. Um, not everybody's culture is tied to what yours is. Um, and I feel like we should be a lot more accepting of like non-binary genders and general transness. It's a thing that's been around for thousands of years. How has being in the local music scene impacted your life? Uh, it's allowed me to have a space where I can feel comfortable being myself and also has let me have a greater appreciation for a wider range of music that I may have, maybe have not listened to before. If you are trying to figure out your gender or sexuality or just who you are in general, um, take your time. It does not have to be immediate. Be proud of who you are. Yeah. 
What advice would you give to up and coming musicians in the, in, in the local scene? Up and, coming, up and coming musicians in the local scene. I think there's three elements of absolute necessity for an up and coming band. One of them is they have to be friends. If your band is friends, if you all can hang out with each other, support each other through your life events, that's when you know for sure y'all will support each other not in just your life, which is the most important, but your music's always going to be secondary. That way when you travel and you do all your things outside of town, you're, you're staying with each other, you're living with each other, you're showering while he's cooking over here and she's doing this and it's like, oh shit, and you can all get on each other's nerves within a month, so you got to be friends. Second thing is you all have to be able to be willing to compromise. If you're you know, bass player is playing a line and he's down for that, but you're not down for it, you gotta be able to say, hey man, do you think this would work? And you gotta be willing to take criticism. And, and it's not ever gonna be harsh, it's because they're your friend and they love you and they're trying to help you out and they're trying to make all the music worthwhile. And the third thing is when you're on stage, you can't dick around. You gotta be able to go and practice, 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 get everything down so that everyone has every element in. You just gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know your part, because it is. You're playing a part on stage. And if you can get up on stage and you can play exactly what you do at practice, and you know how it goes at practice. The door's shut, you're in your room with your boys, and you're just having a damn good time, and you're playing everything on point. Then you get on stage, you get nervous about the stage. Why are you getting nervous about the stage when you're okay, when you're back at the rehearsal studio? So you gotta be able to do what you, you'll feel comfortable enough about the stage that your rehearsal studio and your friends can pick up and go anywhere and just be planted and just do it. And if you can get down in that way, you're gonna kill it. What Tim says, I got some questions for you. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I probably do have 60. Where were you? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No, since that's no way. No way, come back. I just want to ask where you were. No. September 11, no. 2001. No, don't let him ask me. Oh no. Hey, hey, Crash. Let me, let me, let me interview. Oh. Where were you? September 11, 2001. Okay, because I went to Applebee's like the other day. A dollar margarita. The dollar, the dollar readers, the dollar readers go hard. No. For sure. Oh shit. Oh, we're still rolling? Oh. It never stops rolling. Whoa. That's a badass. Damn, they caught everywhere Whoa. we said. That's crazy. What the? Yo. Temp tax. Temp tax. Temp tax. Issue 7. Out now. Temp tax. Wait. Open it. Wow. It's so DIY. Whoa. That's wow. not a grassroots. Alright, now flip the dream sequence. Wow, what's that handsome man doing there? Oh, that's a nice shirt. Holy shit. This is fucking crazy. Whoa. Alright. That's our logo. So I didn't even know that was our logo. That's not our logo. That's our logo. I, I don't think it's our logo. Oh, I guess it's our that? logo now. I guess so. Who's Some this? fucking loser. Wait, do you have extra copies of this? <laughs> I bought one. I you do. You should put it in your hand. This is like quality. It was so good to see you, Tyler. Oh, we got a crossword? Oh, we got a crossword. I, I hope <laughs> that we meet again, Tyler. <laughs> that's not that's crossword. <laughs> Thank you. It's word search. <laughs> has being in the local music scene impacted your life? Um, it really gave me the third space that I needed from like work and school and home because previously I didn't have um, that third location to go to. Like, if I didn't want to be at work and I didn't want to be at home, I didn't have that safe place to be and be myself. And the punk scene really gave me somewhere to be and be myself without having to worry about, well, I'm at home or at school or at work or whatever. What advice would you give to people who want to get involved in their local music scene? 
showing up to stuff, even if you don't know who the hell is playing, you don't know anyone there, you don't know where you're going at all, you don't know how you're going to get there, the best thing you can do to get out there is just to show up because usually you will fall in love with the live music it's so much better than anything else that you can experience and there's scenes everywhere in the country for everyone so the best thing to do is just show up even if you're scared wear ear protection if you're getting into the punk scene please please wear ear protection tonight is, is horrible it means so much to me that y'all stuck around like i said getting to do this back here in the place where i felt so invisible about being trans to come here and be able to say that I am proud of who I am, I'm proud of who we are, I'm proud of who every single one of you in this room are. This next one is some new shit. We played this like three times maybe. Uh, it's about PTSD and how I have it, and if you've been through some shit, this is for you. This is called Post Trauma. Yeah, I can't. Big thanks to uh, Tyler for having us out here. Y'all give, give a big hand for Tyler! We love Tyler, we love Tyler. How was your experience growing up trans in Texas? So it wasn't really like a safe place for me. But like when I went to like like the scene that helped me like be more expressive of what I'm wearing like right now. I have like a shit ton of candy right now I'm wearing. And I was I felt like I can like show like my true self compared to like back then. It's it's been really like dangerous lately and in like and like just with the whole like fear mongering of like trans people and like the news media it's just really it's really sad but um we really do need to be there for like our trans youth for sure the next one was what do you love most about being transgender right? um the things i love about being transgender is it's just it feels really beautiful um i feel like i just i've had so many um conflicting emotions with it in the past and like you know, coming to realization and um, becoming comfortable with myself and learning how to love myself. And I think it's just beautiful how you can kind of get to know yourself even more, like in a more personal and intimate way by discovering like who you are and how you feel and what's comforting to you and how to express yourself. Because I think when, when you find out how to express yourself, it's, it's just, there's a lot of freedom there and it just, it feels really like, nice and I don't think that being trans is you know all about hating yourself because you know that's how some people feel about it but I just I think it's I think it's nice to be trans and it's it's uh, an amazing experience to have my experience growing up trans in Texas um, I was very lucky I had parents that were very supportive of me whenever I came out I came out at a pretty young age. My parents have been very loving and considerate of it, but going to school has been like the total opposite. I would get like, you know, why are you here, like in bathrooms, and um, just overall being like dirty looks, um, I would feel very like kind of by myself in a way, feeling that there wasn't a huge community when it comes to like schooling, but I felt lucky that I was able to kind of lean back and talk to my parents about what I was going through and how I was feeling and just um, not having to really worry about also coming home to the same issues. Keep on going.
Don't let, don't let anything get you down. Live out of spite. And don't, don't kill yourself because we need you here. We need older trans people. We need elders. We need people adult age. Say fuck you to everyone that says otherwise because we need you here. How has being in the local music scene impacted your life? Um, it's given me more people to connect to just through shared experiences such as being trans and queer. And it's also helped, like, help me think more creatively. As a photographer, I've been able to have a lot more experience, experience in taking pictures in the local scene and just having more, uh, getting creative throughout. But being around more artists has been very nice. I even started my own band from that. South and the alternative scene and what I found is that it feels a lot it feels a lot less um, stifling when I just put it down on paper it doesn't kind of feel like there are so many feelings that I've had about my identity and about music and about living in the South and about you know being um, Nigerian American that I just could never comprehend or express until I started working on my zine and I think it just allowed me to communicate better um, with my art and those around me and with my community. And um, I don't know, it's a project that I'm really grateful to have started when I did. What advice would you give to younger trans people living in Texas? Um, I think just to latch on to all the queer people and all the trans people around you because it, like, what I felt when I realized I was queer was just so alone all the time. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like I had anyone. And then realizing that you do, realizing that the people around you support you and, you know, can be your own little family is something just so incredible that I'd recommend for anyone who's just trying to figure themselves out. Because it seems so hard to find people, and it really is, but when you do, just don't let go of them totally. I think that T4T Love in all its forms is something that's really incredible. I am so blessed to be around um, my trans friends who have helped me discover so much of my identity and just helped me feel loved for who I am and who I'm becoming. And I think that that's just really important for anyone to have. Um, as a kid, I feel like I was so brave. Um, there was like not, uh, not much worry in my mind about violence like towards trans people and then like in middle school i started coming out but there was like no fear in me yeah 
um, and I was so like blissful and unaware of these like I would just like uh, I remember I would go up to like teachers and stuff and I would like tell them about my um, preferred name and stuff and they would like um, there would be like an awkward like pushback but I was just so unaware of the actual violence and I was so blissful and I feel like sometimes I am blissful still but now I'm aware that I'm a target I'm happy that I don't resent my fem femininity and to know it's okay to, for boys to be feminine and I'm happy that I'm comfortable with my gender expression and not tied down to gender norms. I feel like in that sense I am free. Fly to Ireland. 